Indeed. And I'm Marjorie Gordon. In nationwide news at this hour, in a race against the clock, an hours long rescue operation is still underway in Shooters Hill in Bull Basin, Andrew. Members of a joint emergency response team are trying to locate a 15 year old who is believed to be trapped beneath mud and rubble caused by land slippage in the area this morning. Meanwhile, the National Works Agency is warning motorists to avoid heavily flooded roadways at this time. And the Med Service says Jamaicans should brace for outbreak of showers and occasionally occasionally heavy rains over the next few days. Nationwide News understands the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions is to decide whether criminal charges are to be laid on two JDF soldiers who have been implicated in a drug smuggling ring and a daring gun attack on the police. Councillor for the Papine Division is dismissing claims by PNP presidential aspirant Mark Golding that he has the ability to reunite the fractured political party. In news from the rest of the world, Israel will not oppose the sales of specific weapon systems by the United States to the United Arab Emirates. And in sport, Netball Jamaica tells Nationwide Sports there is no truth to a local newspaper report that goal shooter Ramelda Aiken is doubtful for the tour of England. And later in our broadcast, in our cover story at 5.35, rescue operations still underway to locate a 15-year-old who is believed to be trapped beneath rubble caused by a land slippage in the Shooter's Hill in Bull Bay area in St. Andrew this morning. We'll get the latest on the search and rescue operations. In public opinion at 6.26, we ask for your reaction to infant school teacher Tanika McCoy Phipps' community Blackboard Initiative, which prov provides schoolwork for students who are not engaged in online classes. Give us your comments by logging on to our Facebook page, Nationwide News Network, and by tweeting us at Nationwide Radio. At 6.40 in the nation's business, heavy rains in the last few days have again showed up the inadequacy of the infrastructure in the western city of Montego Bay, with the flooding of a major hotel and several roads. We'll hear from stakeholders what can be done to fix the problems in the tourism mecca. At 8, it's the A-Team with Dennis Brooks. Oh, all these and more as we take you home on air, on your mobile, Nationwide 90 FM, Nationwide Radio, JM.com, and on the Nationwide app, available in Google Play and the App Store, this Friday afternoon. It's Friday, October 23, 2020. If it's news, it's got to be Nationwide 90 FM. And now the details. An hours long rescue operation is still underway in Shooters Hill in Bull Bay, St. Andrew, as members of a joint emergency response team are trying to locate a 15 year old who is believed to be trapped beneath rubble caused by the land slippage in the area this morning. Her name is Nika Lechman. According to the police, the girl's father, 41 year old Romeo Lechman, died as a result of the tragic incident. His body was recovered at the scene of the land slippage that destroyed their house. Reports are that the National Works Agency and the Jamaica Fire Brigade launched the joint operation after an embankment fell on the house about 8.30 this morning. More on this report from Wayne Walker. Public relations officer at the Jamaica Fire Brigade, Emilio Ibanks, told our news center the body of Romeo Lechman was seen buried under debris from a massive landslide caused by heavy rains across the island. He adds that Mr. Lechman's body appeared lifeless. JCF senior communications strategist Dennis Brooks subsequently told the Nationwide News Mr. Lechman succumbed to his injuries. We can confirm that there was an incident that happened this morning. It was um, a, an incident of land slippage that took place. It was around about half past eight this morning in a section of Shooters Hill called Toby Gully. You know, very unfortunate at this time that a 41-year-old man, he's a landscaper of the area. His name is Romeo Lechman. They call him in the area, they call him Romy. He died from injuries that he sustained when his house collapsed as a result of that land slippage due to the heavy rain that we are experiencing. An intense search operation is still underway for Seneca. Mr. Brooks says she is believed to be buried beneath the mud and rubble. Now, at this time, we continue to search for his daughter. His daughter is a 15-year-old student of a high school here in, in the parish of St. Andrew. 
Um, his daughter, Sanika, is currently um, not found. She is believed to be buried somewhere under the mud and rubble that ensued from the land slippage. Mr. Brooks says residents of the Shooters Hill community have joined the rescue team to assist with the search for the 15-year-old girl. And we're holding out hope. We have a team, a search and rescue operation is taking place at this time. And so the police, along with the district officer from the Jamaica Fire Brigade, a team from York Park, um, and others, members of the community have come out and we're all working together to try our best to find this young lady alive. So, I mean, our prayers at this time are that young Sanika will be found and that she will be found alive. A video of the incident has been circulating on social media since this morning. Residents in Shooters Hill were heard explaining the incident. I Wayne Walker for Nationwide News. Meanwhile, as the country continues to experience persistent rainfall, the National Works Agency, NWA, is warning motorists that driving conditions along several roadways may become an issue. According to Communication and Customer Services Manager at the NWA, Stephen Shaw, there have so far been reports of flooding, landslides, fallen trees and rock falls along roadways in St. Catharines, St. Andrew and St. Thomas. Mr. Shaw says he expects these incidents to increase as the island continues to be affected by the inclement weather. So we have had reports of the weather impacting roads in three parishes to date, St. Andrew, St. Thomas, and St. Catherine. We have the Bull Bay Main Road over in St. Andrew, between 7 and 10 miles, that is being impacted by a combination of boulders, minor slips, and flooding. The Bull Park River has overflowed, and this has caused that area of 10 miles to be impassable. Mr. Shaw says the NWA is working assiduously to assist in the search and rescue efforts to locate 15-year-old Sanika Lechman. We also have had um, some reports of roads being impacted in the Cane River area of St. Andrew and at, at Loudon Hill over in St. Catherine, the road from Barnes to Ginger Ridge is being impacted by a landslide. Okay. And of course you would have been made aware of the situation at Shooters Hill, where we are assisting the, the, the rescue effort uh, that is now underway by the Jamaica Fire Department, Fire Brigade. Mr. Shaw is urging motorists to avoid using heavily flooded roadways. He says rescue operations are difficult to carry out at this time. I know that there are some very intrepid Jamaicans who, despite the rushing uh, water flowing across the, um, the, the roadway because the, 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 the system beneath, the structure beneath, cannot accommodate um, all the water that is coming down from the hills and so it has overflowed onto the road and we have, have seen videos of persons attempting to go through which is extremely dangerous because once that water traps you and it, uh, there is a very slim likelihood of such a person being rescued. Stephen Shaw, Communication and Customer Services Manager at the NWA. The Met Service says Jamaicans should brace for outbreak of showers and at times heavy rains over the next few days. The inclement weather began affecting the island today. Due to forecast that, the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, Lawrence Brown, says the National Hurricane Center has been monitoring the system which is causing the rain. What is causing it is an era of disturbed weather. National Hurricane Center is saying that this area has a 50% chance over the next 48 hours to become a tropical depression. Aside from that, there's a large area of clouds associated with this low pressure area and this is expected to continue affecting the island over the next few days. 
most of the island, if not all the island, would, is expected to get outbreaks of showers, which might, may be heavy at times. Lawrence Brown, due to forecast at the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, speaking this afternoon with Nationwide News. A flash flood watch for low-lying and flood-prone areas is in effect for all parishes. The measure is effective until 5 tomorrow afternoon. A flash flood watch means flash flooding is possible and residents are advised to take precautionary measures and be ready for quick action if flooding is observed or if a warning is issued. Nationwide News understands that DPP Paula Llewellyn's office is to decide whether criminal charges are to be laid on two members of the Jamaica Defence Force who have been implicated in a drug smuggling ring and a daring gun attack on the police. The soldiers have retained Queen's Counsel Peter Champagny and Samoy Campbell. It's understood that the soldiers were interrogated by police investigators yesterday. Queen's Council Champagny spoke this afternoon with our news centre and confirmed that the case has been referred to the DPP. He says the soldiers deny the allegations. Well, I can confirm that I do in fact represent one of the soldiers and the other soldier is represented by Mr. Moy Campbell. I can also indicate that the matter is at a delicate stage now, so I would not want to comment on the particulars of the matter, save and except to say that a ruling should be expected from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution in short order as to the progress and where we go from here. They have been questioned. A question and answer interview was done yesterday, and it is now, as I just described to you, for the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions to look at the file and make a determination. Of course, both men maintain their innocence. Peter Champagny, QC, speaking this afternoon with Nationwide News. The soldiers were allegedly intercepted by the police last week in Gutters, St. Elizabeth. Allegations are both men were driving a JDF vehicle which contained 1,500 pounds of compressed ganja. The police say when they attempted to pull over the vehicle, the soldiers disobeyed and or the order to stop and open fire. The police returned the fire and eventually arrested the soldiers who were unharmed. The JDF top brass told a media conference that the arrest of the two soldiers took place after they called in the police to probe the suspected use of a vehicle belonging to the military to carry out illegal activities. Now to politics, Councillor for the Papin Division, the People's National Party's Venetia Phillips, is dismissing claims by PNP presidential aspirant Mark Goling that he has the ability to reunite the fractured political party. Ms. Phillips, a supporter of presidential aspirant Lisa Hanna, says Mr. Goling's role in Peter Bunting's failed Rise United presidential bid last year disqualifies him from being able to unite the embattled 82-year-old political organization. Mr. Goling, MP for South St. Andrew, is going up against Miss Hannah, South East St. Anne MP for President of the PNP. Stephen Simmons reports. At Mr. Golding's nomination for the post today, he reiterated his belief that he's best suited to reunite the party. He pointed to the fact that he has among his supporters persons who last year supported the failed Rise United campaign and also persons from the successful One PNP camp. Mr. Golding was a prominent member of Peter Bunting's Rise United team that unsuccessfully sought to unseat Dr. Phillips as PNP president. Mr. Golding made the claim again today. When we resume the mission on the 7th of November, it will be reunification of the party. One party moving forward together with a common purpose, comrades. There will be no place in the PNP for any factions or divisions, comrades. This is why my team has on it persons who didn't support the same side as me last year. But according to Lisa Hannah Baker of Venetia Phillips, it's the South East St. Anne MP who has that as an edge. If you are going to use that as a litmus in terms of persons crossing the teams now, or then you would probably say Miss Hannah still has the edge because she has more of the persons who would have supported her eyes and have been very open and frank about part of the reason they see Miss Hannah as the better of the two. She says Mr. Golding had questioned whether Dr. Fe-